Welcome back to another Mac Deck Tech. Today we have the second of four upgrade guides for Murders at Karlov Manor, featuring Revenant Recon, which focuses on surveilling and graveyard recursion. Before we dive on in, I noticed that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode. You might even earn yourself a shout out in a future video, like Sean Massey is getting today. Sean, you rock. As usual, we're taking 10 cards out and adding 10 cards to replace them without touching our lands, though it is worth mentioning that this set actually introduced a new cycle of dual lands that enter tapped but lets you surveil when they do. That being said, let's see what didn't make the cut. Starting off, we have Amphin Mutineer, a 3-3 for 4, which acts as spot removal for pesky creatures your opponent controls, but gives them a 4-3 body to replace them. While a decent effect, we aren't totally removing the body, really just replacing it with a 4-3, uh, which actually has more power than our creature. So, you know, we're kind of forced to hold it up as a blocker, you know, trade off with a 4-3. It's a little slow, a little clunky, and I think we could just do better. Deep Analysis is up next, and is a decent card draw that we could flash back, paying a little bit of mana, a little bit of life. Uh, but with our deck really using our Grave as a second hand, I don't think we need to keep our hand as full as we do with some other decks. Afara's Dispersal follows up our analysis. You know, it could bounce a creature back to its owner's hand, costing two less if that creature happens to be attacking and allowing us to surveil two in the process. It was definitely a difficult cut to make, but one that I kind of stand by. We have a lot of other ways to surveil, so, you know, I don't feel like we're losing a lot by removing this one instance of it. And bouncing a creature back to hand while slowing them down isn't really solving the issue right, it's delaying it. And if that creature happens to have a decent ETB, or they just have generic ETB triggers looking for any creature to ETB, you know, we're giving them another chance to trigger that as well. So, Dispersal, please disperse. Everflowing Chalice is up next and honestly feels pretty mana inefficient for this deck. For every two mana we pump into it, we can tap it for one mana moving forward. You know, 28 of our spells require at least two mana of like specific colors and the overabundance of colorless mana isn't going to be as helpful here as it would be in more of like an artifact focus stack or something that just required fewer pips. Foreboding Steamboat is a you know just kind of weird spot removal tool. Also the fact that we have to crew it and it hits us makes it a little difficult right we're also losing two creatures to this. Um, each player gets to choose which creatures they have removed by the steamboat. So we're probably not removing threats, we're moving, removing like little mana dorks maybe, which like, you know, pretty good to like get rid of, but still not great. I just, I don't think it's all that good. So it's gotta go. Overseer of the Damned is up next and is expensive removal that rewards us for destroying our opponent's creatures. And while we have a few ways to do so, that's not really the focus of the deck, making it a pretty easy cut in my mind. Pylon follows up that demon and is more spot removal. It's expensive spot removal though. And sure, we could convoke to help, you know, pay the cost and also let's surveil. But, you know, we have more cost efficient and repeatable ways to do spot removal in the deck, so I don't mind losing this one. Ransom Note is being cut here as well. Much like in Deep Clue C, it just feels underwhelming. Paying Wonder Surveil is fine. Uh, you know, paying two for one of its three effects is also okay, but it just doesn't feel as impactful as I would like it to be. After that note, we have Thought Vessel, which we're cutting as another inefficient mana rock. I normally like to include this in decks that are gonna draw me a ton of cards and I don't want to discard, but that's not the case here, right? Not only do we not draw a ridiculous amount of cards in this deck, making the no maximum hand size kind of a whatever whatever, but if we were drawing a stupid number of cards, we want to discard our creatures. Let our commander cheat them back out. 
So I just, I think Thought Vessel is a non-bow in this deck, so it's gone. Last up is the Vizier of Many Faces, a clone creature that we can recur from the grave. Clone spells can be strong, but I don't really feel like there's a ton of creatures that we're looking to clone in this deck to gain us additional value. With those 10 cards out of the way, what are we slotting in to replace them? The Grim Captain's Locker is an artifact that's going to let us surveil once per turn by simply tapping it, and could allow us to add more recursion from our grave as an action. Up next is Sword of Once in the Future. Our equipped creature is going to get a little bigger, gain some evasion, and when they manage to get through for damage, we're going to surveil two and be able to recast a one or two cost instant or sorcery for free from our grave. We have a handful of pretty good options to do this with. And so, you know, I think we're uh, we're in a pretty good spot here. Power Conduit is up next, and we're using it as high synergy with our commander, who's bringing creatures back from the grave with finality counters on them. Power Conduit is going to allow us to remove those pesky finality counters and pass out some power in the process. Following up our conduit, we actually have Clock Spinning, which serves a very similar purpose by removing finality counters. We could even choose to buy it back for 3 extra mana, letting us cast it over and over again. Most of our additions actually come in the form of creatures for this deck, with 6 new ones gracing us with their presence, and starting off with Tekathal Inquiry Dominus, which is going to let us remove 3 counters at once, ideally for 3 mana, but life is a resource and we might be willing to spend it here. Soul Diviner follows up our horror and acts as a way to remove those finality counters as well, giving us card draw in the process. Hexavis is up next, and this flying 6-6 six -six is going to let us remove those finality counters while making itself stronger along the way, all for one mana. It also has the added benefit of us being able to remove a plus one plus one counter from itself, it's going to have plenty, to pass out flying counters to our creatures, giving them evasion. Those abilities also don't require us to tap Hexavis, meaning that we could do that multiple times in a single turn. Fane the Broker follows up our counter eating construct and acts as a sack outlet, a counter remover, creating us a treasure to boot, an inkling generator, and can be untapped for 4 mana, allowing us to repeat the process a little bit. Fairy Dream Thief follows up our Broker and is a flying 1 1 for 1. That lets us surveil on ETB, making them a great early play to start filling up our grave, as well as getting in for some chip damage. But they're also a great creature to just be like, cool, I'm gonna chump block with this. Oh, it died? Not a big deal. My commander's gonna bring it back with a finality counter. When it does, I'm gonna surveil. My commander's gonna get a little bit bigger. Last up, we have Eloise Nafalia Sleuth. Uh, so they're, they care about having our creatures die, something that we're willing to let happen knowing that we're going to bring them back. When we have a creature die, we're going to go ahead and investigate creating a clue, which we could then sacrifice to draw cards, and when we sacrifice those tokens, we're also going to surveil. We didn't actually have a Golden Nightmare of the deck per se. Uh, if I was going to give it to anybody... I'd maybe say Hexavis, but Hexavis feels not Golden Nightmare worthy. You know what I mean? Um, how do you guys think is the Golden Nightmare of the deck? Let me know in the comments below. This is also normally where we would transition into some honorable mentions. You know, cards that were a little too expensive to make the cut. But truth be told, outside of the universally good blue and black cards... I'm just not finding anything that supports the Surveil, you know, Graveyard Recursion strategy that's uber expensive. But we have two decks left to go over from this set. Let me know which one you would like to see next in the comments down below. And until next time, good luck with your builds.